Bowden recently received a grant to buy a scanning electron microscope. The microscope allows researchers in diverse fields, from geology to archaeology, to better understand their samples and to read in a way the history behind them. It works by that there's a tungsten filament here. When energy in the form of electricity uh, goes through that filament, there's a stream of electrons that come down a column and interact with a specimen. In our case, uh, the specimens are usually rocks. So to try to interpret what's happening in the magma chambers underneath those volcanic eruptions, I'm looking at mineral textures of very small quartz grains and looking at the growth history of them. The mineral would start growing at the center and then as time went on it would grow outwards, outwards, and outwards, and outwards. But the interesting thing that this records is not only is it growing outwards, but there are times where it remelts partly, starts growing again, remelts, starts growing again. And that's really important in terms of giving us evidence for the longevity of a magma chamber and the changes that take place in a magma chamber underneath these really colossal uh, volcanic eruptions. I tend to focus on sort of geochronologic questions, so trying to assess the timing and rates of metamorphic and tectonic processes. So the images on the big screen up there is an image of, of, of an entire rock sample. So this is a what we call a thin section. So we can end up identifying different minerals using this type of detector, and we can also look at the textures, the ways that the minerals are interlocking with each other. We can look for reactions that have occurred between phases. And what we're looking at here are the red wavelengths that are being emitted from the sample itself. And we can actually see that there are a couple of different domains within this single crystal. And so that's something that we haven't been able to see in our samples before here, which is really exciting for the work that I do. At Bowdoin, we have almost 2,000 coins from antiquity. And they're just a, a wonderful kind of document to study, to, to look at various aspects of ancient life. Here's one example that actually shows an election taking place with people casting their ballots. This is actually minted in what is now Afghanistan. Uh, one side is actually in Sanskrit and the other side is written in Greek. Where the cultures come together, uh, so did the languages and so they are reflected on both sides. We can look at the coins, we can look at what the, how they're decorated, the information on them and that tells us so, so much. But we can do much more with the scanning electron microscope. The scanning electron microscope allows us to look at and study the metallurgy. We can look at uh, interesting moments in history, um, a conflict between, let's say, Octavian and Mark Antony. And they were two rivals for power in the Roman state. And Octavian ends up winning and he becomes the first emperor. But we can look at their coinage and see the economic stress that Antony was undergoing at the time because he begins to cut the silver in his coins. He was trying to make more coins. I work in northern Greenland and in the high Arctic generally. What we use the SEM here for is to do a type of materials analysis where we're looking at iron tools. There was a big iron meteorite that fell up there more than 2,000 years ago, and prehistorically people started using it to make cutting tools. That meteorite has a distinctive signature because it's made of iron, but it actually has a high, about a 5% content of nickel. But that distinguishes it from other early types of iron. So, for example, Norse iron, so iron that had been traded up from the Vikings in southern Greenland. So you're looking at two small, relatively isolated populations, and there's definitely contact between them, and whether it was you know, friendly or unfriendly, sometimes one, sometimes the other, is not necessarily clear, but there was definitely trading going on.